Thank you very much uh, for uh, the invitation and for arranging this, uh, this opportunity uh, for us to meet and uh, exchange ideas. Uh, I'm from Uppsala University working um, at the Swedish Center for Studies of the Internationalization of Higher Education, uh, focusing on uh, student mobility and uh, I've also been involved a lot in projects on uh, the tuition fee and, and its effect. Uh, I will briefly touch upon that today, but it's more um, a run through of the main uh, trends, the rationales behind the rec recruitments and some of the barriers that we, we or the students rather are facing. Um, so uh, yeah, the structure of the talk today is that I'm, I will go through the rationales um, behind why Sweden has wanted to recruit these students, some important changes then look at numbers of students coming into Sweden, barriers to that, uh, retention in numbers, barriers to that. So, uh, Sweden has quite a long tradition of, of recruiting foreign students, and um, in the 1970s, the main rationale, uh, or the main the discourse was very centered on development aid, uh, and wanting to face up to global problems and um, increase cultural understanding among, among Swedish students. Um, there was also talk about international comparisons, but not in the way that we speak of it today, perhaps, but more for the transferability of a certification. So a Swedish degree should be valid in another country as well. Um, moving into the 1990s, there was an increased emphasis on um, attracting foreign students in order to increase the quality of research and teaching through a diversity of backgrounds and perspectives. And in the past, uh, 10, 20 years, uh, there's more of an emphasis on, on uh, talent and skill recruitment. And this international comparisons has shifted from being about transferability of skills uh, or certifications to uh, a competition between countries and institutions in order to increase quality of research and teaching. Uh, and all these are still present, but to different degrees uh, in, in today's um, discourse. So Sweden joined Erasmus in 92, which was very significant for exchange studies. And the Bologna um, implementation uh, with the introduction of the International Master Program was very important for the recruitment, not least of, of third country students. Um, there's been a steady increase of English course and degree offer. We've had it for a long time. We have some institutions where essentially all advanced studies take place in English. Um, and until 2011, all education was free for the whole world in Sweden. Uh, and everyone competed uh, about the same places, Swedish students and foreign students alike. Um, but as of autumn 2011, there's an application fee and yearly tuition fees ranging from uh, 5,000 to 25,000 euros uh, per year, with an average about 12,000. Um, and uh, since a few years back, universities can arrange a separate application round for international students. Uh, so that they can apply at the end of autumn or uh, the beginning of the year for the year uh, where they want to study, uh, like for the next autumn, so to say, because um, it's a race about time here. We want to attract the students before they say yes to a spot in another country. They often choose between many countries and uh, speed is an advantage. Uh, but there are conflicts here um, in the recruitment. Uh, should the students return to their home country or should we keep them? Uh, and the private sector is, is pushing for more uh, retention. Uh, parts of the government uh, still maintains this perspective of, of development aid and a lot of our scholarships go to this, which turns into the next conflict, like should scholarships be awarded based on merits or based on background or need? So Sweden, most of the Swedish scholarships, national scholarships, go to students from de developing countries rather than the, the top students. Um, efficiency versus diversity. Should we recruit only for, from China and India because it's efficient, or should we spread out across the world and market Swedish higher education in a lot of places? Um, that takes perhaps more resources. Uh, so there are a lot of tensions that are sometimes hidden, like retention and or return is, is sometimes concealed behind the, the circular migration um, uh, label. So to, to hide that conflict. Uh, absolute numbers, well, there was a very fast increase uh, in the beginning of the period. 
especially among free mover students, so degree seeking students mostly, uh, not exchange students. Um, and the introduction of tuition fees, now this is all students from EU and from abroad, uh, but if we were to look at only the free mover students from third country, um, then the drop in the number of new students, this is registered students, so it takes a bit of time before it uh, levels out. But the number of new students uh, dropped with 80% from one year to the next in the group targeted by fees, and has slowly increased since. Um, because some of, the, some of the recovery hereafter uh, at the end of the period um, is because of an increase of EU or EEA uh, free movers. It should be EEA rather than EES there in the graph I see now. Um, exchange students' flows are very different from free mover flows in terms of um, country of origin. Uh, they're much more dominated by the EU and EEA, uh, and the flows that come from third countries often come from uh, North America, Oceania, and some countries in uh, East Asia, uh, rarely from developing countries. Because exchange is an exchange, you're supposed to send Swedish students somewhere as well, and they might not be uh, that keen to go to developing countries. So uh, these students from there are, uh, their option if they want to come to Sweden is, is as free mover students, essentially. Uh, now, please don't take pictures of this. Uh, this has not been published yet. Um, but this is an il illustration about, of, uh, of uh, the effect of the national, uh, the composition of uh, third country students in Sweden uh, prior and after the introduction of tuition fees. So this is the number of registered students, um, including exchange and free mover students, because this illustrates a bit of the uh, difference here. So countries marked in red, uh, the number of students from those countries dropped with more than 51%, uh, and those students, uh, those countries are overrepresented in the free mover flows while the countries that are green, their numbers dropped less because a lot of their students come to Sweden as exchange students and were not affected by the fees. Um, so it's a, somewhat of an east-west divide here and you see Uganda and Tanzania uh, were uh, awarded a lot of the scholarships. So that kept their numbers up. Uh, an issue that uh, we're facing is the uh, funneling effect uh, um, that we have a lot of people who apply uh, but very few who are actually who actually meet the entry requirements. So there's a lot of administration to to uh, sieve through this. Uh, and among those who are accepted to courses, only about half actually enroll. Um, so uh, this is a rather inefficient. Um, and why is this then? W what are the barriers? Why do students either not apply, or why do those who apply? Um, why don't they enroll? Well, uh, there are economic issues, of course. Uh, Sweden is a very expensive country. Uh, we have relatively few scholarships, um, and those are mostly awarded to, to students from uh, developing countries. Um, we also require bank statements that you should display assets equivalent to about 800 euros per month uh, so that you uh, are able to uh, prove that you don't have to rely on any other support. Uh, immigration policy, we have quite a slow process um, and even though students can apply to their degree already in, uh, in autumn or in January sometimes, some uh, AGIs have chosen to, to sign up for this early separate round of applications, um, the Board of Migration still does not uh, grant a residence permit until at most two to three months before the course starts because they want to see the bank statement as close to the start of studies as possible. So this is something that um, there are propositions to change this. And um, currently residence permits are only issued for 13 months. So if you want to study a master program, you have to reapply for another permit. Um, and uh, yeah, because it takes such a long time from the application to the letter of acceptance and then the residence permit, some students might opt for, for other countries instead. Uh, that might be part of the explanation why we have so many applications and so few who um, actually uh, go through with it. Uh, they also face 
um, discrimination on the labor mar on the housing market, and uh, we have a queuing system in Sweden for rental apartments, which gives an advantage to locals because internationals have not been in the queue for well since they were born in some cases, so they are 20 years behind in the queue. Um, so um, retention in numbers then. Um, about 20% remain in Sweden, both when measured two and five years after graduation. Uh, and this percentage, 20%, was the same before and after the fee introduction. So uh, fewer students in absolute numbers stayed uh, when the student numbers dropped, obviously. Uh, and there have been surveys showing that a lot more than 20% would like to stay. Uh, so they obviously face some issues here. Um, it's also uh, important to say that, uh, well, 20% is quite a low number compared to uh, other OECD countries where I think it's between 30 and 40% that remain. Uh, but the uh, revenue generated from, from these students are so high that it's often a mistake to, to assume that students who come to study, um, if they study for free, um, like incurs a lot of costs for society because the tax revenue from those who stay are often much higher. Uh, so the tuition fee or not, it's per perhaps not such a big deal in relation to, uh, okay, should we increase the staying rate? That would be a more efficient way perhaps of uh, uh, making it economically more feasible. Um, barriers to retention. Well, uh, retention is contrary to this foreign aid tradition that still um, is quite strong in Sweden compared to other countries. Um, and until 2014, it was actually only possible to stay for 10 days after graduation to apply for a job. Um, but now it's six months, and uh, when the EU directive gets implemented uh, late in Sweden, for some reason, it's going to be nine months, or that's what's being proposed. Um, few students can also genuinely display these 800 euros per month. It's not their own money, but most, even students from wealthier backgrounds have to have um, relatives or, or uh, so who transfer the funds so they can temporarily show it. Um, but students who don't have this face an obstacle, obviously. Um, you have to have someone who's willing to deposit a lot of money on your bank account temporarily, someone who trusts you. Um, they cannot change employer without permission during the first two years. Um, and they cannot change profession without permission during the first four years. Um, and the work permission is granted only for two years at a time, so they have to renew it. And it's not until after four years that they can apply for permanent residency. So there's a bit of uh, administrative burdens here that might make it more complicated. Um, other factors, well, the Swedish language is not needed when studying mostly. Uh, you get around quite easily with English and most people are happy to speak English with you. So uh, it's easy to believe that perhaps I don't need to learn Swedish. But once you graduate, uh, you face a reality where even if your job does not require you to speak English, the employer might still want you to because of the coffee breaks or other things where it's easier for to integrate with the, uh, the work group, etc. Um, so, uh, and it's hard for, for them to find Swedish people who are willing to speak Swedish with them as well. So even if they want and try to learn, it's very difficult uh, because Swedes want to communicate efficiently and Swedes are happy to show off their good English. So uh, we, we tend to switch. Um, there are also quite few opportunities to connect with employers. Internships are, is not such a big thing uh, and um, in many programs. And uh, the problems of the housing market uh, remains uh, not only for students, but also for those who stay afterwards. Um, there are also a lot of informal networks uh, in order to find jobs. Few jobs are announced um, publicly. What about the, since I have a couple of minutes left, uh, what about the advantages that Sweden has? Well, students are allowed to work unlimited during their studies. Um, they can watch, work as much as they want. Uh, as long as they manage their studies, of course. Uh, they can also bring family members during their studies. And the job they get after graduating does not have to match their qualifications. Um, but the, the working conditions uh, within the work they choose have to uh, match the conditions of the Swedish collective agreements. So if you take a job 
and your, your working conditions are uh, too bad, you don't get paid what you should be paid uh, in Swedish standards, uh, that might be a cause for you to lose your uh, residence permit and be sent home. Um, so uh, it's to, to prevent competition of wages. And yeah, it's easy to handle life in English. Um, should I stop there? <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, um, potential future po opportunities, well, we could have even more scholarships or more information about this possibility that you can actually work a lot. Um, there are discussions about this bank statement because it's also o often, in a sense, false anyway. Um, Sweden provides free language courses um, and that could also be emphasized more. Um, universities could probably do more to integrate uh, the Swedish students, the local students and the international students. Um, often the master programs are dominated by foreign students and they find it very hard to, to integrate. Um, and uh, yeah, we heard about the, the struggles about, of connecting employers with students, but that's a potential um, in, area of improvements. And some universities offer housing for exchange and fee-paying students already, but only a few. So perhaps this could be uh, used wider. Um, thank you very much. That was a report from Sweden. <laughs> <laughs>